Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. Hello. This is our horror movie podcast and do not, you know, change your channel. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Yes, it's a Christmas tree. We're recording this way in advance. <sighs> I feel like people who actually listen to the show every week are probably sick of me telling them why mm-hmm. we're recording things in advance. But just in case this is the first episode you stumble onto, I feel like it's important to note why there's a Christmas tree in the background. <laughs> I mean, maybe they'll just think you're quirky. That oh, happy. It's yes. like, oh, <laughs> I have a Christmas tree up in July. <laughs> Well, regardless, <laughs> um, Tim's having a baby, and because of that, mm-hmm. we're doing a lot of episodes in advance. Uh, but very uh, apt <laughs> for this movie. Very, yes, very. Were you worried at all <laughs> after watching this? Uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I was like, oh, I didn't realize that that's something you have to worry about that <laughs> yeah. that can happen to a baby. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this is the potential <laughs> thing. That could th- to be fair, Tim, I don't think it actually is a potentiality. Just to, just to keep okay. sure. So, uh, Thank you. We'll get to that in spoilers because I feel like that is actually spoiler territory. We'll yeah, start I was, was going to mention first. what it was, but then I was like, mm, that might be yeah. a little spoilery. Okay, yeah, yeah. but we'll get to that later. Uh, mm-hmm. So the movie we're talking about today uh, is in Petagor, and part mm-hmm. of what we're doing here is just kind of try to get through some movies. Uh, over May and maybe the start of June from 2020. Now, I, I realize that we're just about halfway through the year by the time you get these. Mm. But for us, at the time of recording, at the end of December, start of January, we're actually kind of fitting in some 2020 movies um, that have some buzz, have some uh, mm. reputation, and that we didn't get to. Uh, there's a few different things we'll be doing. Uh, and Impetigor is kind of one of them. This is one that could have ended up on my solo Shudder series, but uh, <laughs> it seemed interesting enough. That it was worth looking at because it is on Shudder. It's a Shudder mm. uh, release. You, you, <laughs> yes. you knew that like you weren't smart enough to uh, <laughs> talk about it alone. You had to bring in some uh, reserves. <laughs> reserves. Uh, well, I'll be honest, Tim. When you started that sentence, I wasn't sure. I, I thought you were going to like talk yourself up more than just reserves. I thought you were going to say bring in the experts or bring in the, the professor or something. Yeah. But, um. So yes, in Petagor, it is a. Indonesian film, if I'm right in saying. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is from the same director as Satan's Slaves, which we did review uh, mm-hmm. two or three years ago when it when it also hit Shudder. I think I think it was Shudder anyway. Uh, it was, yeah. Um, and this is it's not related to that film; it's just the same director, but uh, and same uh, main actress, I believe. Uh, she had seemed familiar. Now that you mention it, mm-hmm. but uh, so this is the story of a young woman mm-hmm. and her best friend. She is attacked. At her job in the city uh, mm-hmm. at the start of the film and she works at a toll booth at a toll booth and she's mm-hmm. basically hears enough weird things and discovers something weird on her persons that makes her want to seek out uh, her childhood village where she left when she was five with her aunt and basically there's a lot of family mystery about who her parents were and mm-hmm. what this house is and why someone was trying to kill her and goes back to try and figure out why and uh, let's just say the village ends up not being that friendly uh, she goes back with her best friend, who's also one of the main characters. So uh, that's mm-hmm. kind of her main twosome, who kind of take us through the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll leave it there, uh, and we'll mm-hmm. get into spoilers later, of course, but that is the, the basic premise of the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Tim, I'm going to ask you the question. Mm-hmm. What did you think yeah. <laughs> of Impetigor? Well, yeah, I, I say, you know, break out the, the knives and forks, because uh, I ate this movie up. I... Uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you like my joke about knives and forks? <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so I, I'm actually very interested to see uh, how you're going to feel about it because, uh, yeah, we, we were pretty um, opposite ends with uh, mm. Satan Slaves. I really like that one and... Uh, yeah, I don't remember if you outright hated it or just really just wasn't crazy about it. Um, but, I mean, this to me, I, I really, really enjoyed. I think the opening scene with um, the toll booth and her getting attacked, I thought that was, like, really, really well done and just, like, start off the movie on, like, a really high note uh, for me. And then, uh, yeah, I think all, like, the, the mystery stuff works for me. I, I like the... It, it's kind of hard to you know, talk about with getting too spoilery, but I like the, you know, the village stuff. I like the kind of 
aesthetic of it and like some of the you know uh i i guess maybe like kind of um paranoia and like fears and, and stuff that uh uh paranoia is not really the right word but uh, like some of the stuff that uh comes out of it um it, it's it's definitely not perfect i do think um there's some stuff towards the end that i'm not like crazy about like there's like maybe like a few like kind of ghosty things that i'm not like super into but not enough to really uh detract me too too much from the movie um yeah because I, I think uh yeah the the there's still a lot of stuff that's like really good and interesting about it and uh yeah i mean uh again yeah i i think i mentioned this like with satan slaves but i uh yeah i mean i i really like this director i'm kind of interested to see what they do next and i think they do already have like a, a trailer out for uh their new new movie so i'm excited for that but yeah i uh i like this quite a bit i will say the title's very good before i say anything else <laughs> and Pettigore's an impressive title it's memorable it sticks with you sure uh, <laughs> So, yeah, no, I wasn't super mm. hot on Satan Slaves. Uh, mm. I didn't hate it, but I was very meh on it. I was very kind of, uh, you know, supernatural. Uh, <laughs> same, same old thing. <laughs> uh, so, I actually, I'll agree with something you definitely said there, which mm. is the opening sequence at the toll booth, mm. I thought was very effective. And uh, yeah. I would say that overall, I like the movie. I don't love it, uh, but okay. I definitely like it a lot more than Satan Slaves. Um, I think because a lot of the menace in this is human, mm -hmm. I think it is to its benefit. There is some sure. supernatural mm -hmm. stuff. There is some ghostly elements, which you mentioned. I, and it's funny because the opening with the, the you know this creepy man who kind of comes up to talk to her at the booth and then like, he comes back and forth. And the way mm -hmm. that shot was very effective, the way it sort of always was yes. from her perspective of the booth mm -hmm. so that he was always off in the distance. It was like really good, uh, not quite slasher movie per se, but really good stalker killer stuff. And yeah. there's a couple of other like moments later on that were good in a different way, but still very much with the human elements. And mm -hmm. it made me really want this director to do something that doesn't have anything supernatural in it. I kind of <laughs> want to see him just do a ser you. serial killer movie because mm -hmm. I feel like the way the way Joko Anwar directs stuff mm -hmm. or directs these specific scenes really makes me feel like, oh, I want more of this. Yeah. I want a movie where it's about someone, you know, in a location like this being stalked by a killer and the tension that comes from that. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the movie is by far at its weakest when it gets a little bit too supernatural-esque or a little bit too... Uh, like, I don't, I actually don't think the backstory is too bad. I, I, I will critique, though, there is a moment in this movie where it basically pauses for 10 minutes for backstory to just be spoon-fed to us uh, for a long, yeah, long that's... time. Yeah, yeah, that that was my problem with it. Like, I think it is a um, like once you kind of find out like why everything's happening, what's going on. Like, I think it is a good uh, reason for it. I just don't like the way it's like presented to us. There's, yeah. I mean, basically, without getting to spoiler, there's the, the main character is getting to see some flashbacks or getting to yeah. at least have the the information of the flashbacks delivered to her, mm. and. It's this extended series of flashbacks, and it's actually the second set of flashbacks. Because there's a set of flashbacks earlier on mm -hmm. where a character is telling the public story of something, and yeah. then later on when something supernaturally lets the main character see more of it, and it reveals some twists and turns and blah blah blah. It does a thing where it sort of gives you a different perspective of a lot of these sequences that we'd already seen. So, mm -hmm. but it'll do like a couple of minutes, and then it'll cut back to her sitting there against the tree. And then it goes yeah. back to more flashbacks. <laughs> and then it comes back to her sitting against the tree. And then it goes back to more flashbacks. To the point where when it cut back to her for the fourth time, I'm like, she's still sitting there against the tree! How long is this going to go on? Yeah, so, I, I yeah, definitely agree with that. Yeah, so there was definitely some things to critique and some <laughs> weird uh, choices. Uh, I, I guess that's a pacing and structure uh, complaint sure. more than anything else, but... Uh, that was very odd, even though I do think some of the, the flashback stuff was interesting enough. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, that's good. And I, I think, you know, one of the bigger things that this, this has got going for it as well is that I, I don't remember the characters being particularly interesting in Satan Slaves. Maybe you'll disagree with that, but I certainly don't remember them now. Uh, I, whereas here, I think the two best friends, the main character and her best friend who comes with her on the trip, I think they have chemistry. I think they're kind of, you know, witty and funny in the way they sort of like, make fun of each other, banter, mm -hmm. talk about stuff. You know, because e even the opening scene, because they both work at the toll booth, uh, but they're in mm -hmm. like, different ends of the bridge or whatever it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, would you need them at different ends of the bridge? I guess you do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but 
No, you would, yeah, because for both directions, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But I also had to go through a toll bridge, okay? <laughs> but... Mm. Yes. Oh, no, I just, I, I don't know, I've always, uh, I don't know, I always kind of wondered, like, what that job's like. Oh, I'd probably right. just, I'd say boring, but they tend to be busy bridges, because that's why there's a toll, mm -hmm. because it's busy, so yeah. maybe you're just constantly doing stuff. I, I only know of one bridge in all of Scotland that has this, to oh, be yeah. honest. There's not a lot of big bridges here that, you know, because I, 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 because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the US has tons of these things in various places. Yeah. It's very annoying. <laughs> There's a side there. Tim's like, yes, I've had to pay many at all. Yeah, well, when I used to drive up to Boston a lot, there was, um, yeah, that I definitely would have to go through them a lot. Uh, and I, I guess it's like a little easier, um, you know, because you know most people probably have like some type of electronic, like automatic debit thing that you don't mm. even need a person there. You kind of just drive through. But yeah, and there's plenty of times like. When you'd be getting close and you'd be like, oh crap, like, do I have any cash on me? Like, ugh, what am I going to do? Like, it's always mm. like very frustrating. But I don't know, I, I just always kind of wondered like the logistics about like a, a job like this. Like, um, I don't know, just like, yeah, like, what do you do all day? Like, what do you do if you have to go to the bathroom <laughs> or something? <laughs> like, because <laughs> then true, she's like, they both work here and they're at the opposite ends of the bridge or whatever. And mm. they're actually talking to each other and just bantering over the phone as they're working because, like, who's going to stop them? Uh, yeah. So they're just talking to each other, and they're 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 they're, they're cracking jokes at each other. Basically, they're having a debate. Well, because uh, the the main the main ca uh, character whose name I should probably get just so that I'm calling her some Maya. Uh, yeah. Uh, technically, she has another name as well, but that's uh, you know whatever. But yeah, Maya. Uh, so she is complaining that her neighbors are calling her a hooker because she comes home late from work because her job is just you know night shift, which is oh, yeah. really weird. Like yeah, because no one works late shifts. That's you know. Mm. Odd. but they're basically having a debate while not being a hooker would be better than the job they have and it's a really funny conversation mm -hmm. uh about just like oh no i couldn't do that i mean you know what if the dick's weird or like and it's just it's just <laughs> really weird funny like just banter back and forth conversation um and it very quickly i think that's opening scenes kind of a master class in making me like the character establishing mm -hmm. there's some sort of threat because she mentions that there's been a creepy guy who's been going back and forth uh, mm -hmm. sometimes more than once a night which is weird um mm -hmm. and then when he does show up and it becomes a bit more threatening and there's actually maybe the, the potential for violence it really escalates and it's almost like mm -hmm. a really good little short film on its own it just happens to be the prologue to what the rest of the story is going to be as well um and, mm -hmm. But I think that chemistry between the two leads is kind of probably the, the best thing about the first chunk of the movie, is that them bantering sure. back and mm -hmm. forth and their debating of what to do uh, mm -hmm. is, is definitely more interesting. Because some of the characters mm -hmm. in the village that are, like, acting mysterious, like, you know, you, like, you don't know if it's, is this a hot fuzz thing? Are they on a cult? Or is this, like, <laughs> a, you know, a Stepford Wives thing? Or is it a, you know, to pick, pick your mm -hmm. movie. Pick your movie where a character goes to you know, a town or a village and everyone's yeah, acting mean a bit off. I think I originally watched this uh, at some point in October, and I, I think it was earlier in the month, and it must have been right around the time where I was near the end or I just beat Resident Evil 4, so, like, you know, like <laughs> I was all into, like, angry villagers. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah if, if they entered the, the, into the town and immediately, like, a guy in a ra with a rake and a hat was, like, <laughs> you know, shouting things at them. And Spanish especially would have been weird given uh, the, the the location. Right. But, um, uh, uh, what's interesting though, is I, I can't remember the name of it now, but they actually bring up like an ancient language that's like mm -hmm. uh, not used anymore. Jo Joven or jo Jovenese? Oh, yeah, or something it was, some, like it was something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they, they don't use it any, anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's it made me think. I guess the the closest comparison I can think of would maybe be like Scottish Gaelic, where there's some northern okay. parts of Scotland that have Gaelic, and most people in Scotland don't know it or speak it <laughs> but there's some people in various locations up north that will speak a bit of gaelic and it may, that's what this made me think of is like okay mm. the, the old women here still speaking that and yeah yeah geez I, i'm trying to think I, I feel like i just read or watched something that was talking about gaelic but uh i can't remember what it was this uh, is a fascinating tidbit you're bringing into the show here Tom. <laughs> I was going through my head. I was like, uh, was it one of those books or one of those <laughs> movies or something I watched? I don't know. A book, a movie, yeah, a TV show perhaps. <laughs> it could have been like maybe something from Supernatural. There uh, was a form of media at some point recently in Tim's yeah. life that <laughs> in some way mentioned the existence of Gaelic. Yeah. 
<laughs> end end of a uh, story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I do think it's kind of interesting because, like, because that's like a that's like a completely like whole other like language, right? Like, it's not like connected to English at all, right? Or or Gaelic? I thought you were talking about the, yeah. the language, and that's not yeah, yeah, no, no, no. yeah, Gaelic, yeah, Gaelic's completely uh, different. It, I, there's different just kind of yeah. there's different versions of Gaelic. Like Welsh is a, a version of Gaelic as well, like its own version Hell of yeah. Gaelic. <laughs> Uh, uh yeah it's just kind of funny because yeah you don't really think of like you know like irish or, or scottish people like you know uh like speaking like a, having like yeah a completely different language <laughs> i was looking behind me I, I think one of the dogs are at the door <laughs> growling <laughs> <laughs> they want to get in yeah no i mean most don't like you know if you grew up in the central belt of scotland or you mm-hmm. grew up anywhere that's not like one of these specific places you never learn gaelic mm-hmm. and unless you specifically want to study it for whatever reason um, yeah. appar- apparently because there's like one or two <coughs> Gaelic TV channels apparently they pay very well because you have to learn the language and there's so few people that speak it that it actually mm-hmm. pays quite a lot of money to like be able to work there and like oh, cool. do, you know like, speak the language and like you know, whether that's you know presenting or even just being able to write the subtitles or something like that yeah. it, it, it pays well apparently mm. good to know <laughs> and the dog is trying to headbutt his yeah. way into the room by the sounds <laughs> of it uh, spooky yeah <laughs> Seems after midnight, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, no, the characters are good. This is the point I was making. The characters are good. <laughs> yeah. No, like, and uh, I, I agree. Like, what with basically what you're saying, like this whole opening again is like, <clears throat> I mean, like, say what you want about the rest of the movie, but yeah, I just think like this this whole sequence is just so impressive and yeah, for all the stuff you said like it immediately establishes a character but then like once the you know kind of like threat starts happening it's like handled so well and it throws you like you know like you're you're going from yeah that's a very kind of light breezy conversation to all of a sudden like you're really fearing fe- feeling fearful for this character especially because like again being in this toll booth is such a you know tight confined space mm-hmm. that there's like nothing you can do and uh you know uh and again like yeah the I, I think it's a good point you bring up about how yeah maybe this director might handle um uh like human uh horror maybe a little bit better which you know because i still like the supernatural stuff um you know in, in this and satan slays but i do agree there is something about like yeah especially in this opening scene the way he handles the the person they're just so like creepy and dead-eyed and like yeah, the way they're like just staring and talking to the character, you yeah, just it's, it's, feel it's, so like off guard. Yeah. And it's how it's shot as well, because like, <laughs> he's lit basically just by the red lights of the car, so he's yeah. got this red light on him. And then when he walks back to his car, he get a weapon at one point, and it's like you know, mm-hmm. it feels like everything, the tension is really rising. Uh, yeah. And there's a moment very quickly after this where they've quit their jobs and they've opened a little clothes stall in the market <laughs> because they want <laughs> yeah. to get away from this place, mm-hmm. and. Very quickly, uh, and early in the film, there's a sequence where there's a sort of creepy moment where everyone sort of deserted the place, and she sees what looks like a sort of creepy, like almost like a nun or something, like just as a figure, yeah. and it, it ends up being like a sort of fake scare, right? There's not much to it, mm-hmm. but as soon as it started, I was like, oh no, don't, don't do this, don't do this creepy <laughs> supernatural stuff because it just feels way more, I don't know, whatever. I, I just I wasn't feeling that as much. Luckily. Right. It is more about the human threat for the most part. Mm. There is supernatural stuff in the backstory, and there's definitely some mm. supernatural stuff there, but it's less to do with it's less mm. to do with like oh a demons after or something like that. It's not that's not what the story yeah. is. Mm. Uh and I appreciate that. And I, I think uh th- there are critiques to be had along the way, uh, for sure, but yeah. uh for the most part it did have some surprising moments that that did sort of like go, Oh, that was interesting or different and I I liked like how some characters yeah. were portrayed. Um, I, I will say the ending's a little bit, oh, we have to have our final, oh, escape. we can't just right. let, let it just end naturally. It has to have, like, a final little, aha, dun-dun-dun moment. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that's horror, I suppose. Sometimes you just we have to do it. We have to do it, yeah. It's the done thing these days, apparently, <laughs> in, in, the, in the horror business, Yeah, as they say. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of spoiler stuff to talk about, so I think with, with that said, we'll uh, we'll dive in. But uh, before we get to spoilers, I will thank our Patreon producers at the time of recording. Thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palaces, David Short, Board Now, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, Brett Williams, and David Brown. They are all $20 or more at patreon.com slash TV, where you can go as well 
and support us for as little as one dollar per month and get some bonuses for your trouble you get access for one dollar to the entire back catalog of all the bonus episodes we've done uh, you can find a bunch of stuff in there, including all four <laughs> Wishmaster movies. You can find uh, the the remake of The Wicker Man. You can find a bunch of stuff yep. in there. That is Invisible good Maniac. <laughs> that wasn't us. Wait, what? Was that us? The Invisible Maniac, yeah. I thought that was an ace. Oh, I no, that I... was like the first one we did. Oh, it was. You're right, it was. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? It's just because Invisible Man can go either way. It can be I sci fi or True. horror. So for some reason, I, I, I had in my head <coughs> put that into the sci fi camp at this point. But right now, you're right. Invisible Maniac was the very first one we did. Uh, they're on pause. There's no new ones for a few months while Tim's on paternity leave, but they'll be back. Uh, you still get early access to all the new episodes, though, by a day at the $5 tier. Uh, otherwise, you can support us uh, by hitting the like button, commenting, all that sort of stuff, rating the podcast on iTunes, five stars. Uh, so please uh, do any and all of those things uh, and we appreciate it. So, uh, And it helps keep all the content coming and the show to continue uh, throughout these trying times. Uh, I mean, Tim, <laughs> Tim's about to have kids to feed. So keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> uh, anytime someone critiques any of your financial choices, Tim, just yell, I've got mm-hmm. kids to feed. Yeah. That's I got a... You know, I mean, we have three humans, two cats, two dogs. That's a lot of mouths <laughs> to feed. Mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Be like baby will be first, dog second, cats third, and then my wife and then me. <laughs> the pecking hold on, order. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why, why are cats third? I have to debate this with you here a little bit. Uh, They're not bringing much to the table. There. Like, look, I realize as much as I think the cat should be above the baby, um, I realize that's a losing argument. But I'm going to argue for the cats being above the dog. Come on. Now. <laughs> Look at the pure cat in the background. The, the, no, 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 the disrespect that's being shoved their way right now. <laughs> the, the, the cats, the cats will eat garbage. The, the dog, ha- dogs have they have fine taste. They need a that is a very that is bullshit. sophisticated palates. Cat, <laughs> cats are way more fussy. Dogs will eat any shite you throw down in front of them. Yeah, I mean our, I mean maybe most dogs, but ours have a very, <laughs> very refined palate. Oh sure, yes, okay. All right. Tim has posh dogs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Confirm it. Hashtag it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, anyway, spoilers. Spoilers for Impetigor. That's where we are, folks. So, so the big thing, I guess I explain what's actually going on in this movie. That's the, the thing. Because obviously, they sure. go to the creepy village. There's a you know a scene in the bus in the way there that's kind of creepy. Which I thought was handled where like, the guy behind him seems like he might be a little bit weird. But he's like, ah, no, nah, like, you know, uh, you're not bothering me. And he kind of helps translate. Because she finds like a mysterious... It's almost like the little thing you get in a fortune cookie. It's like a, it's a bit of paper that size. Yeah. That's been like... Well... Yeah? Y- oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's... um. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of crazy because, like, the... I guess we don't really mention the... um At the start, you know, the person that's attacking her has a... I guess it kind of looks like a, a machete, I guess. Um, But, and he... uh, Yeah, she has, like, a, a scar on her leg that he, you know, kind of starts to dig into uh, with his weapon. And then later, yeah, she's kind of, like, picking at it and pulls this, like, paper out. Yeah, and it un- unravels it, and it says, and it's in this language she doesn't read. Which this guy in the bus, tur- he's always he's a professor, a lecturer at a college, and he, he reads languages, mm-hmm. so he helps her translate. Um, and what we find out later, of course, is what is what essentially the guy at the start was doing was confirming who this was. That this was to mm-hmm. him confirming that this was the person he was looking for. So, time mm-hmm. to swing his machete, uh, <laughs> and, and take it, take her back. Uh, he gets shot by police, obviously, if that wasn't obvious. <laughs> For, you know, <laughs> our security guards show up and shoot him. But uh, but what, what's actually happening in this movie is that... So they go to the village. It's kind of weird. They eventually, like... They, they're lying about who they are. Eventually, the friend says that she's the main character. Says that she's Maya, mm-hmm. but by her original name. That this village mm-hmm. knows her as. And they and- very quickly, you know, kidnap mm-hmm. her and... Well, not only kill her, there's more to it than that, but, mm-hmm. yeah, like, because the old woman who kind of is a bit standoffish, and she's kind of the mother of the guy who runs the town, she mm-hmm. comes in, and her son's got, like, a robe on, and he's getting all ceremonial. The other two guys that kidnapped her are standing there as well, and 
I, I actually almost thought it was darkly funny how the, the mother came in and she's, she's a very old woman, so she's kind of hobbling mm. along and she's not moving very fast. She sort of hobbles mm. up, grabs a knife and just goes and slits her throat very, very, yeah. <laughs> very quickly. And it's mm. like, why are you wasting time with all this ceremony crap? Just kill her yeah. and get, be done with it. And yeah. we, we then see her hang up the skinned flesh of this, the, her friend, mm. the best friend character. We see her flesh, like, like basically her boobs, like hanging on a clothesline. <laughs> and obviously this is all, what the hell's going on? What, 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 why are they doing mm. this? This is mad. And mm. so to explain what's actually going on in this movie is that the main character, Maya, mm. she was born of this uh this puppeteer is this a shadow puppet <laughs> guy who was very rich she came from a, a wealthy family so they owned the big house she in the was village a, she was a puppet's daughter puppet star <laughs> yes he was a puppet master Ooh. Um, and he was rich and he was successful at his puppeting and mm. <laughs> and he <laughs> fell in love with the the most attractive woman in the village and she loved him too so they got married mm. and it was a happy union but then they couldn't get pregnant they were trying to conceive a child and it couldn't happen mm. um but then eventually after five years she became pregnant however what no one in the town knew at the time is that the baby was born without skin and this is our main character this is maya <laughs> and the dad this uh, puppeteer he basically kidnapped and killed three young girls in the village mm. as a sacrifice to satan the demon whatever to mm. basically give his daughter skin which worked um <laughs> yeah you can't say it didn't work <laughs> yes but then there's a curse born from this where everyone who is born in this village uh is born without skin and they have to kill all the baby because mm. that's another scene that's like earlier on is that she spies on like a like a birth and immediately the guy just takes mm. and you don't see the baby it's, it's sort of like almost from the pov of the baby but mm. he dunks the baby in water and drowns it and it's like oh this is dark as shit what's going yeah. on <laughs> so they're basically having to kill all their babies as soon as they're born because like the you know the the because the one who they did let live is just in misery and just lying there in yeah. pain oh, oh, I, yeah. I, if anything i question that he's even survived this long without skin to be honest <laughs> like i feel like you'd die pretty quickly yeah I, yeah i don't even know how like how that would work like i, I, I don't know <laughs> yeah so that's the first version of the events we get when she gets mm. told by the three little girl ghosts who she kind of keeps seeing so the three girls who were kidnapped so she could have skin keep appearing to her <laughs> uh they eventually let her see the rest of the backstory which reveals that her father is not actually the puppeteer uh mm. the guy who runs the town had a, an affair with the wife which is what actually conceived her mm. and then the mother who we saw slit the throat earlier she is actually the ultra evil one who actually put a curse she's, she does like black magic and witchcraft she put the curse on her to be born without skin so she actually did a curse first <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it, wait it's a um so like the i i do think i, I get a little confused by this because there is like a lot going on but i think moving, it was there's, the, there's a lot of moving parts here yes yeah. so the the mother who's like you know the evil one was it her son that like had the affair like i think it was like yes. maybe like some help okay and then i, I was on like was it because like she was mad that he did that the, or so there's one part of this that i didn't quite get because she mentions okay. it later so so that so the mother of the leader of the town she's the evil one who did the curse in the first place mm -hmm. uh yada 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 she says something <laughs> when she's going full villain towards the end and kind of admitting things she talks about how she used to be uh i don't know if it was quite raped or just like she was sort of expected to have sex with the oh right with um yeah. i think it was like so the rich puppeteer i think it was his father used to mm. use her as like a sex slave so right yeah it was out of anger that now i, I think i think i was a little confused by mm. this part i was a little confused by why she already hated them i didn't quite get that in all this flashbacking mm -hmm. around yeah i uh I, I don't know the so I, I i'm trying to think because i um I, I I feel like I, I maybe might have had a, a a better handle on it the first time I saw it, and then because uh, when I watched it again, I, I watched it this morning, but I was a little uh, rushed, <laughs> kind of running around. But the if I remember correctly, like or or maybe this was just something something I was kind of like placing on it. But I thought she like kind of mentioned something where it felt like she was like, oh um, yeah, like uh you know we were supposed to like serve these people and like kind of just do 
uh you know like whatever they ask for like you know like like basically like okay like she yeah you know, that stuff that happened to her like she didn't like it obviously but like that was like you know your job like that was you just kind of did it and like don't really mention it and then i think I, I don't know if like she saw that like her son was maybe like falling in love with the 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 wife or whatever or maybe like their relationship like seemed too loving or something that she was like think, angry think, about it i think the evil mother definitely resented the fact that her son seemed to be falling for the puppeteer's wife that definitely yeah. seemed to be a, a factor uh but regardless she puts and this curse she, and, oh, and yeah. does she also do like a spell that like he forgets too yeah she, they mentioned yeah. that at the end that she that he doesn't remember uh this mm -hmm. Although he seems to kind of believe it quite quickly, so I think once he's told, it just kind of comes back to him, like, almost immediately. Yeah. Um, because that, that was the weird thing, is that even though he's kind of one of the villains throughout the movie, try to chase her down to kill her, because obviously the back half of the movie, once this happens and she, you know, and Maya realizes that her friend's been, like, kidnapped and killed, there's a lot of her running around, uh, hiding from the villagers. Yeah. She ends up hiding with the wife of the guy from the start of the movie that tried to kill her, who doesn't know Oof. that her husband's dead. But, that was like such a good reveal when you find that out. It was like, ooh, like the one person yeah. <laughs> is trying to help her. Oh. Yeah, and she she wants to help her because she doesn't believe that the curse will be lifted. Because because what everyone in the town believes that if they kill, uh, you know this this Maya, the girl who was you know the the, the one who was given skin out yeah. of the deaths of these three girls, if they kill this woman and skin her. And then use her skin to make shadow puppets in the style that the, the girls were originally, then that'll yeah. lift the curse. But this mm. woman doesn't believe that. She doesn't believe that curses can go away. Uh, although mm. it turns out she's wrong. The curses can go away. It's just that the curse is actually much simpler than that because the ghost <laughs> little girls just tell Maya that if the, if they, if she just buries their skin with their bones, mm. it'll put them at rest, and that'll be the curse over. Uh, so. Mm. This all sounds batshit insane when you say it out loud like this. <laughs> it, it makes sense when you watch it. It does. It does make sense when you watch it. It does make sense. So, just to sum up, and I'm just gonna, I just want to try and sum this up a little bit again succinctly, mm -hmm. right? For anyone who's not seen okay. the movie and just wants to understand what I'm saying here. <laughs> so, in the past, there was a puppeteer <laughs> and his, his beautiful wife, they couldn't have a baby. She had an affair with the son of this evil witch woman. The evil witch woman <laughs> then put a curse on the baby that was then created out of that affair, and the baby was born skinless. The puppeteer, out of trying to save his daughter, uh, killed three little girls. Um, although there's an extra thing here, because one of the things I didn't mention is that after he did this, he like the, the original flashbacks mentioned that the puppeteer goes mad. And we get this scene oh, where right, right. he starts killing everyone in the room, like behind this, like mm. the shadow curtain that he uses for his show. Yeah, it's like it's an interesting visual because you see him sort of swinging a machete around and there's blood spraying against the, yeah, the fabric. The... Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, it's all in shadow because uh, again, because mm. the way this works, these shadow puppets, it's like he's behind like a canvas that's so when he holds mm. up something in front of the light, you get like a shadow on the canvas. So you see that's just a, the... you know. Yeah, and I feel like it doesn't sound like that impressive because usually when you think of it, you think of someone just kind of like waving their hand. <laughs> but he 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 actually does is able to do like a really good job with it. Like he has like all these different moving parts and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's <laughs> a lot of effort put into it for sure. Yeah. But later on, we find out that um, it's actually the son who I guess is still pretty evil because he actually makes it look like he commits suicide. Because mm -hmm. when we originally see it, it looks like he. He slashes his own throat with a machete, mm -hmm. but when we see the second version, where all the the plot holes filled in by the ghosts, mm -hmm. this is this sounds so complicated. <laughs> when you're saying it out loud. Uh, we see that the 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 evil woman's son actually is the one who kills everyone in the room and then slits his throat, but does it with his like in his hand, so it looks like he's committing suicide. Um, yeah. I. <laughs> I feel like there's so much going on in the way it reveals it that I probably, <laughs> there is a couple of details that will probably make more sense on a second viewing. Sure. When I can actually take in some of these things. <laughs> um, because yeah, like, I, uh, yeah, I think, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I think me, that's maybe like something that I'll have like a little bit of a complaint about. Uh, like, again, I don't have anything necessarily wrong about the story. It's just... Yeah, something about the way that it's like presented that kind of makes it like a, a little confusing, or mm -hmm. you know, or maybe not confusing, but it does like take some work to like 
like all right, all right let me kind of put some like blocks together um especially because like you said you're kind of getting like two versions so it's kind of weird when it's like you get a flashback and you're like okay i think i know the story now and then it's like a little bit later it's like oh wait no i gotta go back and kind of realign some stuff i, and... I think it'd be one thing if you got a lot of the story but there was one key difference later on but almost yeah. every single like part of the story has a new a new section when right. we get it again later on or a new spin on it to show us what was yeah. really happening and it, it becomes like actually a lot to take in so yeah. i think i took in the majority of it and the gist of it but there's definitely some details that I, i'm still not entirely mm. sure on uh sure so but for the most part it, it's definitely so batshit insane <laughs> that it does actually have a lot of it, it's, it's, it's entertaining you know as i was yeah. learning it all i was like okay there's a lot going on here and i was glad that it was mostly just human stuff i mean yeah there was black magic involved in it, which i don't mind but it wasn't like ah demons this well, ghost the, that you know yeah i mean i i think yeah that's definitely something that uh that that's the strong suit is you know it, it doesn't boil down to hey we got to run away from a big cgi ghost it's like yes i don't know yeah like there is some ghost stuff and and maybe like there's a little like like there's a scene where she's trying to get away in a car and like you know a ghost child appears and like <laughs> pulls off its skin and i think it's kind of cool but like the special effects aren't like I don't think they're horrible, but they're that, not, like, amazing. But... I think... Well, there's two car scenes. The one that I didn't mm -hmm. like too much was where she's going to get away because the driver's got a truck and he's he's driving off, but mm -hmm. then, like, he turns and sees a ghost and yeah. he crashes the car. <laughs> that annoyed me because it felt a bit cheap. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the woman who's helping her does find out that her husband's mm -hmm. dead and she's very mm -hmm. sort of, like, standoffish at that point, but does still help her eventually once she's sort of calmed down a little bit she still helps her to the point where she's, I, e she's even the one that saves her later on because they actually mm -hmm. you know, the villagers catch maya they have her mm -hmm. hung upside down they're going to slit her throat and she's yelling out hey no here's the backstory you know it was really you mm -hmm. you're, you're actually my father technically you're my father hey dad <laughs> uh you know your evil mother here she she's behind all this and yeah. she's trying to convince them that there's another way to stop the curse that she's already done it because she has already done it we've seen her like go and bury the bones in the skin yeah um, and it's actually the other woman who was helping her who runs out with this new baby. Which, by mm -hmm. the way, if there's anything I'm going to like, maybe poke a little bit of a hole in here, is that there's so many new births happening in this town that there's like there's like five over the course of the movie that, that <laughs> are there to, to be relevant. When we first learn what happens to the babies, then a second example mm -hmm. where Maya sees it. Mm -hmm. So when this is all happening and she's she's done the, the the burial to try and lift the curse, it's very convenient. Oh, there's a there's a new birth happening in a few hours. <laughs> like, how many new births are happening in this town at any given? It's not that many people here. Well, especially if there if you know there's a curse, like wouldn't you kind of wait to get pregnant? I know, like, <laughs> I know. why is it, why is there so many people? Yeah. Do they just not believe in contraception? Is, is that is that possibly it? yeah because it's like well, yeah why are you all getting pregnant when you know there's a good chance your baby's going to be born without skin and have to be killed and yeah. why are you all due within a week of each other it's really weird <laughs> uh very, odd. very do, you, do you have a season is this the season to all get knocked up is it you know? uh, could be because <laughs> I, I like the idea that the motivation of the guy who comes to her at the start of the movie is mm. because his wife has just become pregnant and so he's de he's determined to find the solution because he doesn't want his baby to be born, uh, mm -hmm. you know, skinless. And it's like, oh, okay, that's actually a really good motivation. Why mm -hmm. everyone in the town's pregnant and having kids right now is really weird. It makes no sense. But yeah, <laughs> it, it is what it is. But anyway, so the woman that's helper runs out with the baby, saying, "No, this baby's okay. This this baby, mm -hmm. the curse is lifted. This baby's healthy and alive and has skin." Mm -hmm. And immediately like all the villagers who have been told for years that they have to like find someone and kill them and they've already helped kill someone are like uh oops a daisy yeah that's gonna be <laughs> not feel great so the evil witch mother mm -hmm. holds a knife to her neck and says it's either her or me son it's either her or me and mm -hmm. basically it ends with both her and her son slitting their own throats and lying mm -hmm. like next to each other uh mm. and probably just like a miserable dark ending for them but they're, 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 yeah. you know even he's still pretty mm. villainous he's still done a lot of shitty things although right, right, right. i do question how much of that is like the mother doing like black magic to control them or make him forget things or do I mean, her bidding. It, it, even without black magic there's probably like just a lot of her influence you know yeah that makes mm. some sense mm. so there's a lot of, so there's, there's a lot of plot in this movie it's actually quite a yeah. staggering amount of plot <laughs> for a horror movie yeah 
Uh, but like, I don't know, yeah, I mean, I feel like, like you said, it does sound like a little crazier, like when you kind of parse it all out there. But I, I do think like, you know, the movie does a good job of, you know, kind of, you know, feeding it to you, except for like the, the one just kind of ghosty exposition part feels like a little, yeah, like maybe like, I, I, I don't know, like the best way how to get that information across, but I don't know, it just feels like a little cheap just to have like the ghost come and be like, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna put my head to yours, and you'll find everything out. Here's your exposition dump, and I think it it made it worse that it kept cutting back to her because it kind of emphasized how long (laughs) it was taking, which was weird because you could sort of see the villagers with their like their flashlights off in the distance, and it Mm -hmm. felt like why are they not any closer? Like it feels like (laughs) because if it just dulled in in one chunk and then cut back to her, be like, okay, well, time like she got all that really quickly, even though for us it was like two or three minutes, but for her it was you know a snap second, right? But because Mm -hmm. it keeps cutting back to her. It gives you the impression of time passing for her, mm-hmm. uh, and because of that, it feels like this is weird. What, how have they not found her yet? They're like, you know, they're getting closer, yeah. <laughs> but they're not, 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 not really. They're not. They're still in the same place somehow. Uh, well, and maybe that's supposed to tell us that this is all happening quickly for her. But like I say, sure. cutting back to her three or four times makes it feel like time is passing. So that's a maybe an editing problem more than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely not needed. Yeah, but I, I guess yeah, the way it dumps the exposition and what two big you know chunks as a bit of a problem from a structural point of view uh yeah. but it is worth mentioning you know whenever someone does get their throat slit or someone uh there is a kill or there is something like that it's very effective and looks very good oh yeah yeah no i i think that stuff like uh like again the the cgi ghost stuff um there's not a ton of it but yeah that stuff is a little iffy but all the actual like you know like yeah slitting of throats and skinning uh like human flesh and stuff like that stuff like looks really good and um i i really like this like village setting like it, even when they you know right away when they get there it's like you know it feels very creepy and like yeah everyone just like automatically seems kind of like distrustful and like you know even when they're kind of trying to be you know nice and informative like it, you know it's you still like feel like oh they have something to hide and that you're not really safe and then i, I kind of love how like the movie starts off with like you know this very tense scary scene where someone is you know trapped in this very small enclosed space and then you know (laughs) to the you know later on the movie we get this point where you know she feels like very trapped but in like a very you know big uh open space like you know like oh like you're trapped in the village like um i don't know i just think that's really cool and then uh yeah like i mean if anything maybe i could have even used like a, a little bit more of like kind of running and sneaking and hiding around and stuff like that that stuff is all really good yeah, we kind of glossed over the fact that, you know, the first half hour is... Because the best friend is there for a while. So, so she's there for a, yeah. at least half an hour, if not a bit more than that, before she's uh, killed. Uh, in fact, it may even be closer to the halfway point. So there is a lot of build-up mm-hmm. that maybe is a bit slower. But luckily, their their friendship and like, interaction is entertaining enough that you're kind of yeah. into the slow build of them, like, sort of theorizing, okay... Because the reason why they're going there is because she realizes she may own a house, so it may be worth something, mm-hmm. so they want the money for it. Um... But then everyone's yeah, like, so weird and hostile towards them that they start to really question mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And I, I do kind of like the mystery of, like, you know, it's, like, a very, like, small village and, like, you know, there's, like, a lot of small houses and then there's just, like, just this one, like, big, like, you know, very uh, you know, elaborate house out of nowhere that, like, you know, it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time and it's, like, okay, why is no one, like, living here? And, yeah, it seems like, <clears throat> you know, just... um so strange that it would just I'll, be out in the open here and i will question though the best friend at one point goes to take a bath mm-hmm. and this bathroom looks like condemned i'm like why would oh yeah yeah why, why would you even think about going into that bathtub that is just that does not make sense to me yeah. whatsoever also i mean we mentioned uh like the baby killing but i mean honestly the darkest scene in the movie might be the three girls that are kidnapped you don't see it dead on but you actually see the shadow puppet, as it were, of like all three of them get their neck snapped, which is actually really dark. I yeah, was like, you don't usually sure. see such. A, I mean, it's not again; it's not looking directly at them, but just seeing the shadows of it happening is a lot more direct of how I tend to expect to see a child death in a movie. It's a lot more. Oh yeah, uh, it's definitely the, <laughs> the most visual I've seen of a, of a death mm-hmm. like this, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Because uh, obviously the, the 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 text, the little slip of paper that was put in her leg, her dad did that. Not not a real father or a birth father, but you know the puppeteer. He put mm-hmm. that in her leg because he realized that she was being haunted by these three girls, and this was like to ward them off. This was like a 
like a spell to like keep yeah. them away. Um, mm. So uh, that's how that ties back in from the start of the movie. So I mean, everything does neatly tie together. Like the, the everything does kind of yeah. you know work together uh, as far as mm. I could tell. Again, there's a lot of details uh, that might become clearer mm. on a second of viewing, but it's interesting enough, and you're kind of like intrigued by the wackiness of it all. That I think you're in uh, in for the ride if you get into it. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's, yeah, it's no, not, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. I oh, know that no, it's just like a, yeah, I think a, a good mix of like, um, yeah, there's some like creepy stuff, but then like, yeah, some very real like horror of, you know, these people like, you know, hunting you down and like, yeah, especially scary, like, you know, before she even knows anything, like, yeah, why, like, you know, in the opening scene, it's like, just kind of like freaky that like oh this person like wants me dead for like i have no idea why and like they call me by this like different name and stuff and like yeah that in of itself is like kind of eerie and um mm-hmm. yeah and then like all the backstory stuff like i like that it does kind of have like almost feels like the way you would you know talk about like an urban legend or something or like the way people would you know uh, like talk about like if there's a haunted house on their street uh like i like that kind of vibe to it and uh yeah, I mean, you know, there's a few minor complaints here. Like, you know, I don't think it's perfect, but a lot of it, like, really, really worked for me. And, uh, yes, yeah, so I was really happy with it. Yeah, I was uh, I was into it more than I was expecting to be, based on the mm-hmm. director's previous movie. I wasn't sure what cool. to expect. Uh, so yeah. I was surprised. And I, I think, well, I don't think this is, you know, flawless by any means. I'm agree with it super high. I think it's a good movie with some interesting ideas, uh, some very memorable moments. Mm-hmm. I will say the impression I'm left with more than anything, though, is the potential of this director tackling mm-hmm. some very non-supernatural uh, concepts in the future. Because that yeah. opening sequence is very well done, and I think mm-hmm. I'd, I'd be really intrigued to see more of that stuff uh, going forward. You know, I, I wanted to check it out before we did, but I, I forgot. But uh, I do think he, uh, he has a trailer out for his new movie. Um <clears throat> I, I forget what it is, but uh, maybe I'll watch this well, watch it after he's, we're done. He's not listed as directing anything after this on IMDb, but he is okay. listed as rating a couple of things oh, after okay. this. Uh, one, which is also 2019, although technically it was 2020 before everyone got this, mm-hmm. so this will be eligible on our best of 2020 list, uh, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Uh, <laughs> one is called The Queen of Black Magic, which he did not direct. He just wrote. Okay. Uh, so maybe that that's ki- what I'm thinking of. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. And then the other one, which is not coming out until next year, uh, mm. and it doesn't have it seems to have an English title yet. So it's just uh, Shri Ash- Ashe. I, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, and the plot is unknown. But it's based on a comic book, apparently. I mean, you probably could look up the comic book if you wanted to. Wait, hold on. This is the first of the next <laughs> films in the Bumalangit Cinematic Universe Phase 1. <laughs> interesting okay that's very specific it's very specific all right so he's done like a comic book universe thing or at least writing it uh but it doesn't seem like he's directed though he's not no so oh, okay so i'm sure he'll direct something before long though yeah uh all right yeah i want to say it, it must be the queen of black magic yeah because i'm just looking stuff up real quick and i think i'm seeing a recent uh hmm um uh, later disgusting article about it so that must have been where i saw where i saw it but cool yeah check out that trailer later and and and, and uh, it looks like these are all coming to shutter so <laughs> that's uh cool oh good uh, um now the uh, we, we should probably have to talk about like you know the end end yeah which so I, it, I think i already mentioned you weren't <laughs> yeah hold on which i yeah i'm not really crazy about yeah it, it jumps a year later uh after you know maya gets away everything's fine curse is mm-hmm. lifted uh which feels right for the movie but it basically yeah. gives us the idea that there's a new curse because the ghost of the evil witch woman shows up mm-hmm. and eats the baby out of a pregnant woman. Uh, yeah. no, we, don't, we don't see it, but <laughs> basically we hear some screams. She, she appears in a reflection and the husband comes running in and he's like, what happened to the baby? And it just cuts to like the ghost of the woman just sort of like, it's like chewing something. And it's like, yeah. wait, this is... The... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm all for a movie where there's a ghost of a evil witch eating babies. <laughs> that sounds like a, a fun time, potentially. Yeah. But it didn't, I, didn't, I didn't need it at the end of this. It, it just feels like there is like a sense of relief. Like once the curse is lifted mm-hmm. that like... I mean, granted, we don't really you know get to know anyone in this village fairly well but it is kind of like 
okay, it feels like that's done great. And then to just all of a sudden be like, nope, there's a meat like, you know, almost immediately like a new curse. It's like, ah, oh, God damn it. I mean, <laughs> so, there's like, this what, thing... is it going to be one healthy like child in this village? And then it's like, I mean, we just complained about the dark and the wicked, but I feel like there's a lot of mm-hmm. this problem with horror movies where for some reason, there's this this trend where they have to end with no the horror is not really defeated like they have to end yeah. with that yeah. that feeling it's like you know we can we can have a happy ending but still have the story be quite tense and scary and all that stuff but right, it, yeah. it doesn't deflate the rest of the movie because you end with oh we, we solved it something don't get me wrong some movies should have a dark ending some <laughs> movies should have with yeah. the, everything's hopeless and despair and blah 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 but totally. sometimes it's just not the right move and it just feels kind of tacked on and i think this because yeah. it even jumps a year ahead so it does feel really tacked on it's just kind of like okay yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's because he has an idea for an Impetigore 2 that he wants to do at some point. Yeah, or, maybe. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but I had fun. So, uh, Tim, yeah. why don't you rate Impetigore? Uh, so, again, I, I am going to go uh, pretty high. Um, I mean, yeah, this is my second time watching it, and I still like felt pretty captivated by a lot of it. Um, I, yeah, I like the you know performance like from the two main characters uh and again the the opening scene's great um yeah like you know the a lot of stuff in the village and you know the backstory there's a lot of like cool interesting ideas uh, again there's a lot going on but it all you know like works fairly well and um i, I think a lot of the horror elements are great um uh, you know there's it's not perfect there's a few nitpicks here and there but uh again it i really really liked it and uh work really well for me so I'm, I'm gonna give it go as high as an eight and say uh Ooh. yeah good job <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go as high as that it's about <clears throat> i'd say it's a little more uneven than that mm-hmm. but uh, i'm happy to give this a seven and say it's good cool. it's all seven so uh i definitely liked it more than Satan slaves and uh so, some I've, of the uh, mm-hmm. imdb user reviews seem to imply that i'm crazy for thinking that because that, so <laughs> there's at least three or four here that say not as good as satan slaves lame or boring or something well uh so i i did think this was going to be uh, uh a little bit more of a competitive episode because i yeah because I, I i remember you really didn't like satan slaves mm-hmm. so i thought okay maybe this is going to be round two uh so so i'm a little surprised but i mean even though i really like satan slaves i do think this is better like uh, uh-huh. I and, and again like I I like Saint Slaves a lot. It, it worked uh pretty well for me. But I yeah I still think this is definitely the more interesting one, um the one that has more standout bits. Um, <clears throat> like Saint Slave is good, but I think at the end of the day it is just a a haunted house movie. And I I think it does you know the haunted house stuff really well. But I think this is actually like oh, okay this is something interesting and different I haven't really seen before. Yeah, it's it's a bit different. Um. I'm just glancing at the IMDb user reviews right now. Mm. Uh, so this one from T Rex five six eight one nine six eight two five from earlier this year. Uh, this is the headline for the review. It's official now. The future of cinema no longer resides in the U.S. <laughs> exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Well, I, I mean, I think we did mention Hold on. before. Okay, okay. <laughs> Eight out of ten. <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I just, I mean, that, I, that headline just makes it sound like oh this is the best thing ever but it's like, yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> you know, <ten. laughs> uh no that, that is pretty funny but i mean i think we did mention before that like um yeah I, like i mean i think you know aside from, like before the last couple of years I, I can't really think of like any indonesian movies i've seen but like um when we did the first day in slaves uh we did it like right at the same time as um uh as it made the devil take you uh, it was a little bit later but yes yeah, they're all in the last yeah. few years yeah but like that you know that those well i think um when we reviewed them i think we did it around the same time or at least somewhat close together but okay. like um but the yeah like i, I think you know we, we just kind of randomly like oh yeah like i haven't really see many movies from there and like all of a sudden yeah it seems like they are popping up so like i i think it's uh <laughs> i mean i, I don't really uh, it, it seems like a pretty bold statement to say like oh yeah the, the future of cinema is uh going in that direction but yeah i do like that we are getting you know more movies from there and yeah i don't think i guess it's... just from different places in general but i don't know if i could say it's as good as the uh the early 2000s like korean kind of like sure onslaught because like all of a sudden like t- 2000 to 2000 like seven from korea was like hey by the way you should really care about like chanwook park and you should really care about yeah. 
uh, all these <clears throat> all these wonderful movies that are coming out of there now. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it feels like a relatively whereas you know obviously other Asian countries have been making movies that or at least that are more universally known. You know, Japan's yeah. been well known in the film industry since the like the the forties and fifties. So it's not. But mm-hmm. whereas Korean's film industry, at least to people in the West. It seems like a newer thing. I'm sure they were making things for a long time, but oh yeah, yeah. In terms of stuff making its way to us and being like, "Hey, this is cool stuff." So maybe it's the same thing here with uh, Indonesia, where okay, they've probably already always been making stuff, but maybe oh, finally yeah, yeah. it's starting to trickle out, and we're getting to see it in the and maybe to having more dedicated streaming services for this sort of shit is exactly why we're seeing <laughs> uh, more of it spring out. So, uh, yep. but there you go. Uh, that is that. Uh, if you made it this far in the review. Put the, put the word puppeteer in the comments uh, to let us know you made it to the end. Uh, Tim's going to do his pose for the thumbnail, so here we go. Three, two, one, pose. He's a very happy, very happy man, uh, thinking about his uh, skinless baby. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so uh, we mentioned Patreon earlier, of course, patreon.com slash TV. Please go over there and consider supporting us. Uh, like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. Get us on the Twitters at Streams Midnight for updates and banter and whatnot. Who knows what we've been tweeting out there uh, at the time of this coming out, because it's months away in the future. We don't know what we're going to be saying by then. Uh, Tim's probably going to be yelling about, you know, like baby balls or something. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what's really scary, guys? When the baby starts crying at 5 a.m. and you have to get up. <laughs> that's, the, that's the true horror now. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds like a reasonable <clears throat> prediction. Uh, all right. See, I don't think that the crying. I don't think will be creepy. It'll be creepy when like it's just staring in a corner and laughing like that. That'll be unsettling. <laughs> Your baby's going to do the Blair Witch, but they're just in the corner yeah. of the room, just st- <laughs> staring in the corner. <laughs> and for for whatever reason, when the first words are finally spoke, they'll just they'll speak in a, an English accent just so they can say Bram sounding things. <laughs> Daddy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you very much for joining us. We're, we've got a few more left to record, uh, which I'm letting you know, just so you know, because I think it's going to be really funny from the audience perspective, where they're just going to go from one week to the next. And, but for us, it will be like five mm. months of difference in recording. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's quite funny. So, mm. uh, yeah. So, yeah. Let us know what you think of the movie in the comments. Have you seen it? But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies and we will see you next time.